peace everybody I'm gonna shoot this video today my second video today and I want to talk about how interesting it is for the last 200 years we always had a person who came to us to teach us who we are I read this book about Booker T Washington called up from slavery he always talked about how every other day a, a different man came talking about he had the calling from God to teach the people to lead the people this has never failed but I came to the conclusion these particular people who come to teach black people who they are <clears throat> what if they're designed to just do that to keep us confused because if you think about all the different identities we allegedly have we're from Africa we're from uh, Morocco Spain we're from America we're American Indians we're from the tribe of Shabazz we're from another planet planet X and nobody can tell you right now who they are because the people who we strive who we thrive to strive to become the Caucasians have successfully destroyed our identity but none of that even really matter because in the book of, in the bible the book of uh, exodus moses asked god he said who are you what is your name god answered him i am that i am so therefore you are who you are you can never not be who you are you could think you're something else you could think you're this a dog could think it's a cat a lion can think it's a dog but it's always going to be a lion so you always will be who you are that'll never change you shouldn't focus on what the people did in the past you should focus on what you're going to do right now our ancestors built cities and civilizations they were mathematicians they were engineers architects they were musicians poets doctors so all you gotta do is practice those qualities they were governors kings you know politicians lawyers if you was to just practice the things that your ancestors did you will be who you are you will become who you are but the biggest business one of the most profitable businesses is discussing the origins of the Negro phrenology the Negroid cranium the Caucasoid cranium the Negroids came from here everybody in the world is discussing the Negroid and where the Negroid came from and everybody on the world is watching the Negroid play sports play music the negroid the so-called negroid negro nigger neg negro is the center of the world but we're in confusion worrying about the Geechee Harriet Tubman uh, Denmark VC worrying about Nat Turner and what they did and how they failed people should worry about what you're doing now what are you learning now what are you achieving right now and how would that get you out this hole that we're in how would that get us collectively out of this hole what I found about the so-called conscious community the black conscious community they get accustomed and comfortable with going to a room and listening to a person talk about what they should do what they need to do and what they're never what they're going to do because once you think about what you're going to do people will say okay let's when, when are we going to do it you keep people in suspense and hope and also you know that the people are too afraid to do the things that we need to do because they fear the retaliation and the destruction so they're not going to do and they hope you never say we're going to do a time and a date when we get together to do the things that need to be done they're not going to do it so they're accustomed talking about listening to a man discuss politics and spirituality whatever he always has a huge audience charging him at the door to listen to him talk about what needs to be done. And it's been going on for centuries, literally. And I'm going to talk about two particular uh, quotes from two people that we used to watch growing up. One is from uh, Imam W. D. Muhammad, Warwick Dean Muhammad. The other is from Minister Louis Farrakhan, who were both... Uh, descendants uh, of the nation of Islam under Eli more, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad they were uh, 
posterity of that and I'm a I'm I'm a descendant of that too. So Minister Louis Farrakhan said whoever prescribes the diameter of your thinking controls the circumference of your actions. Plain right there. They pres they dare prescribing our thinking, our history, our culture, behavior. And they're determining how far you're going to go and what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. And when you're going to be destroyed, how you're going to be destroyed. They got the cages set up for you, the cemetery set up for you, the asylums. They got everything set up for you because they gave you, they prescribed the diameter of your thinking, the straight nothing. The other one was more important than that, more impressive than that, that I heard from Warwick Dean Muhammad. He said that when we're born into this world, we're born into a state of triple darkness. He said the first darkness is the society, the status quo, the things that we learn on the surface. He said that's the first darkness. He said the second darkness is when you realize all of that is false. You come across consciousness and think you know the truth. That's the third dark, the second darkness. He claimed the second darkness was the teaching of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Really, he said that's the third darkness because he say the womb is the first darkness. But I say the first darkness is when you come out the womb and you're born into this uh, society, this philosophy, this worldview, so-called white supremacy. That's the first darkness. The second darkness is when you come out of that and think you know the truth. You're introduced to teach, uh, a, a philosopher that we just talked about. You go to the room, hear this dude talk, or you join the organization and you follow them. The Rastafari talking about we're from Ethiopia, you know, go back to Africa movement. The five percenters talking about we're gods, like all of these conflicting philosophies to try to determine who we are. That's the second darkness. The third darkness, in my opinion, is when you leave that, you realize that is fake. If you thought you was a god, you thought you was a moor, you thought you was a... Uh, a Rastafarian, whatever you thought you was after you left the first darkness, you join something else. Or you become a rogue and start researching everything. And that's the third darkness. And once you go to those three stages of darkness and come out of it, that's when you start getting the truth. So, another philosophy I came about that I that derived from what Wardeen Muhammad said about the triple darkness. Each stage of darkness has a triple darkness so if there's three stages of darkness that we're born into there's really nine stages you have to go through three stages of darkness just to get out the first darkness the second darkness has three stages and the fourth dark the third darkness has three stages so that's nine stages of darkness before you come to the light the truth of what this world really is and i would just give you i would just make it really simple you gotta think everything is fake and false Everybody, everything you learn, the science they're teaching, you got to doubt every single thing because it's all darkness. It's all false. And once you realize and doubt every single thing, you come across something that's undeniable. Out of all of the doubt, all of the darkness, once you come across something that's, that you can't doubt, that's where you begin to get the truth. If you could doubt anything if there's so many contradictions like the so-called black people in america has at least 20 different identities we're israelites we're moors we're uh gods we're egyptians we're everything it's too many different uh it's like it's too much reasonable doubt in that but the one thing you can't doubt is that we are we do exist regardless of what you think you came from you do exist and the earth exists and we have a sun floating around us we have water coming down from heaven into the earth the lightning coming down all of these things are undeniable and they are they are based on objective reality empirical reality it's not based on theory and mythology we don't know if anything they ever taught us is even true because we don't have the ability to time travel and these people control all of the information that's distributed in the United States and probably the whole world. 
The only thing that they that they can't control is what's written in stone. They can't really erase the uh, the documents that our ancestors left us. But we don't have the ability right now to translate it because we're too busy thinking we're this and that and not we're looking at the actual artifacts that our people left and try to decipher them. The furthest your average philosopher can go with the Omax is there's giant heads in Mexico. They never went down there to figure out why there's giant heads, who made the heads, what do they mean, nothing. They only go off what they can Google search or go to a library and read. They don't go to, to the pyramids in Mexico and decipher the, the writings and the artwork, the pictographs, the uh, bash reliefs, none of that. To figure out exactly what they said, the people who lived in that time. You're only repeating what the white, the so-called white man is telling you. And that's lazy. We have actual objects that exist all over this planet depicting us in positions of authority and power. And we are. So therefore we could see ourselves in these these drawings that our ancestors left. And that's where you begin. If you want to actually go on that, that route of figuring out who you are. Or you can just figure out what you're going to do henceforth. To really accomplish your particular desires or mission. Or a purpose of life in this world. And then you can go to my website. Uh enigma.com and purchase all of my books and t-shirts particularly the people who voted for Biden you gave him a presidency for absolutely nothing in return if you could do that to him you could go to my website and purchase everything or you ain't black